Welcome back guys. Today's video is going to be on the backhand slice and we've done other videos on the backhand slice but today we're going to focus on one thing and that is how to keep that slice low. Here's how we keep it low. Hey Instagram, what we are going to talk about today is the slice. Do you trust your slice? Todd trusts my slice. You're going to see what happens. All right, so here's a disclaimer. Todd and I have been working on our slice for a year, just nonstop. Our slices have become extremely accurate, so don't try this at home. Definitely don't try it. What we're gonna do is Todd's gonna kneel down on one knee. He's gonna put this tennis can right here on top of his head. I am gonna hit a slice and knock that thing right off of his head because my slice has become extremely accurate, and yours can too. That was a pretty amazing video. We've been working on our slice for a long time. If you want to check out more videos on our Instagram, I'll put a link uh, down below. So we're going to get to it. We're going to hit some slices and we're going to talk about a few of the key things that keep the slice low. We've noticed when we're teaching our uh, two, five, three, oh, three, five players, when we first show them the backhand slice, they all pop it up high every single time. And so we've got to get to the core of what those reasons are and we're going to talk about them now. All right, so let's get started. So this is an, a, a little example of how I teach my students to keep the racket face squared up at contact. Most people think that a slice is contacting the bottom of the ball like this. But as you can tell, if I contact the ball like this, the ball is going to go straight up in the air. And that's what everybody does when they learn the slice. The slice happens from going high to low and putting backspin because we're going high to low, but we're not coming under the ball. So a good way to start to get the idea of this in your mind is to come up to the back drop the fence or if you have a tarp at your club and to just make contact with the racket straight flat on the back of the tarp like that. You can see I'm not coming at it from the edge. I'm not popping it up and coming under it with the edge but I'm coming high to low and making contact right there. That's a great way to get the feel for not getting under it and not popping the ball up. Alright so we're going to be hitting off our ball machine and we're going to give you some tips and tricks to uh, keep your slice low. Yep, and I'm going to start with keeping the face squared at contact, not getting under it. So you'll see that first. All right, I got to go turn on that machine. All right, you ready? Yeah, and just notice where my racket face is, is at contact. It's going to be fairly straight up and down. It's maybe slightly open, but definitely not like this. If I contact it like this, it's going to go about 40 feet over the net. So I'm getting a split step going, getting into here, and keeping that ball low. I'll hit four balls and just try to find, try to see where that contact is. That one was perfect, really low. Split, one more. All right, so another thing that you want to think about is when you're hitting these slices to not open up your shoulders. You want to stay sideways. So as I hit this, I'm going to go through the ball and then I'm going to stay like this, facing this way. I do not want to come in here and open up with the shot because you're more likely to pop the ball up. So hit here, push both arms out, and stay to the side. One more thing I want to talk about is my right elbow. If I lift my right elbow up, I see a lot of people doing this. You can see that the face opens up and I hit the camera and the microphone. <laughs> I'm not broken. even going to show you. It's so broken. I've got to keep the elbow down. This elbow down keeps the racket face squared up. By opening the racket face, I'm popping it up. So focus on that right elbow. All right, the next thing is the contact point. I want to get a contact point that is by my knee. It's pretty far back. It is not out in front of me where you would typically hit regular ground strokes. So as you can see here, I'm waiting for it. I got my racket up. I'm hitting it like that and staying sideways. But that is that contact point is really far back. All right, I'm going to talk about one more thing. I want to talk about using your left hand. I see a lot of people slicing like they're ready for a two-hander and they keep their left hand down here and then they slice and let go. You'll see all good players holding it up here on the throat of the racket. And the other thing you want to do is keep, keep that left hand on the racket right until you make contact. I'm bringing both hands together and then releasing. So that helps me keep stable 
with my wrist and it helps me keep the racket head up and away from doing all these weird things when I when I drop it. So keep it up high and hold it right until contact. All right, these are a few tips that you need to implement if you want to keep your slice low. And remember, the whole point of hitting a slice, the major reason you hit a slice is to keep the ball low, to keep the ball under their strike zone. Mm -hmm. Roger Federer's slice is the best probably of all time, and he does it because it keeps the ball under the guy's knees, and they have to either slice it back or reach down to hit a, hit a topspin shot, and they can't do much with that ball. The slice makes it tough. Yeah. Yeah, people aren't used to it. All right, well, we will catch you again next time on the next episode.